Keyframing is the mechanism by which EDIUS allows you to have settings change over time. It's a very straightforward process once you know what you're doing. Very simple principle. And uh, once you've got it for one context, you've got it for pretty much everything. I'm going to show you how to keyframe using the audio level of this track. This is a piece of music by the artist Dan Whitehouse, based in the UK. It's a nice piece of music, but it's a little bit too loud because CD music is usually fully attenuated. And also, for me to be able to adjust the level over time, the whole track is a little bit short for my liking. So the first thing I'm going to do, here's my track, is I'm going to hover the mouse over the top edge of the 1A audio track. I'm going to click and drag upwards. And as I do, you can see this track's going to get a lot larger. I'm just going to resize the timeline a bit so you can see what's going on. Now, if I right click, I can also change the height by choosing a number from the list. And if I select multiple tracks, I can change the height of multiple tracks all at once. So pretty straightforward to adjust the height, but I find usually clicking and dragging does the trick. Now, if I just click to the beginning of this clip, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit, I'm holding down control, and I'm rolling the mouse wheel towards me. In fact, I'm just going to move the clip on a little bit so you can see right at the start. This clip starts with some atmospheric sound. That's fine. So what I'd like to do is have that audio fade up from silence right at the beginning. It's a nice slow fade. And you can see from the waveform where the singing begins here. It's not necessary for me to specify the audio level for every single frame of my video. All I need to do is set the start and the end of the adjustment, and that's it. So what I'm going to do is, over on the track header here, I'm going to turn on volume. I'm just clicking once to switch this to volume mode. And now, straight away, I've got the option to add keyframe marks. Now, there are quite a few combinations of modifier keys that will change the way this so-called rubber band will behave. If I just click and drag, I'm going to create a keyframe. And a keyframe is just a point in time, usually identified by a marker, something like this, which contains specific settings. In this case, I've had the audio level drop, and then I've had it rise up. I'll just undo a couple of times. If I hold down the Shift key, you'll notice I get a different icon. And this is a flat level adjustment. And also, as I adjust, you'll notice at the very bottom left-hand corner, I get an indication of how much I'm changing the audio level. I'm going to take this down about 10 dB. Now, I want to add a keyframe that will be the end of my fade up from silence. So I'm just going to click without any modifier keys, and there we go. And that's fixed the audio level at that point in time at that volume. Now, it's pretty cut off, but at the very beginning of this clip, there's a half visible part of an existing keyframe. Every clip has a keyframe at the very beginning and very end automatically. I'm going to click that and drag it down to the bottom edge of the clip. Now you'll see you get this curve because these are logarithmic audio fades rather than linear ones, which is just better, a bit more natural sounding. If I now play that back, there we are. A nice, slow, gradual fade up, followed by the audio being a little bit quieter. Is this what it's for? Great. And that essentially is rubber banding. It's all that you need to know to keyframe pretty much anything in the ADS interface. The visual effects can have complex layers of multiple settings which change different parameters over time, but essentially it's always going to be the same principle. You're going to add keyframes, and you're going to change the settings for them. A classic example would be if you wanted music to dip below, say, a piece of voiceover, if I get some media... And let's just put this on my 1VA track, around about there. So let's say this had some audio that I wanted to be able to hear. I can now hold down the Shift key and click between these two keyframes, and I'm going to create a dip. So I've got my audio playing at full volume, and then it drops down under the voiceover, plays a bit lower, and then comes back up again. So that's classic rubber banding with audio on the timeline.